as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Wait a minute. So, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Are they still burning? Guys, welcome back to another video. Um, and I'm going to react to another video. Man, people keep asking that kind of question about hellfire and eternal um, hell, I guess. So, I'm making a video about it because I want people to know what the Bible actually says about hellfire and whether you're going to be in hell forever and ever and ever in torment. Let's get into it right now. Yes sir, what's your name? Uh, Oleg. Oleg. Nice. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe as we are here. Right. Uh, how can somebody be in hell forever throughout the entire eternity, forever and ever and ever, and be in torture, given that God is love? Okay. It's quite difficult to reconcile the two. Yes, it's a good question, but I would challenge the premise of the question because the premise of the question says torture. Nowhere in the Bible does it say torture. It, what it says is torment, which is more internally inflicted. Torment is the idea that I regret. Torment is regret without repentance. Like I'll give you an example I used before. You say you, you're speeding and a cop catches you. You may regret that, but you don't repent of it. Right? You're going, man, I knew he was there. Why didn't I slow down? Right? I gotta get a radar detector, you know, or whatever. You're not repentant. You regret, but you don't repent. And that's what hell is. It's continually sinning against God, even in the eternal state, because you don't want God. And according to the scriptures, according to Luke chapter 16, the people in hell aren't asking to get out of hell. They just say, go warn other people about this place. Remember the rich man in hell? He's still treating Lazarus like he's his servant. Hey, Lazarus, help me out down here. He doesn't, and he says, to, he says, go tell my brothers about this. And Jesus says, they already have Moses and the prophets. Even if someone rises from the dead, they won't believe. Because the problem isn't here, the problem's here. They don't want it to be true. Yeah, but even if it is torment, it's still quite difficult to imagine somebody being in torment mm -hmm. forever and ever and ever, mm -hmm. given that God is love and you have somebody in heaven enjoying forever and ever as well. What is it's God's just, alternative? So it, it's just quite difficult to... Well, first of all, it, I understand your point, but it's a moral objection, right? It's saying that somehow God is immoral for doing this. But since God is the very standard of morality, we have to trust that he is going to be just in the afterlife. Nobody's going to be put at a level of torment that is excessive. Their level of torment will be a level appropriate for their sin. Uh, and just like there are deg uh, degrees of punishment in hell, there are degrees of reward in heaven. Because God is just. God's not going to punish the garden variety unbeliever at the same level as if, as if he would Hitler. Right? People are going to be treated fairly, justly, because God is just. That's, that's the whole point. He is justice. So it might be hard for us to imagine it, just like it's hard for us to imagine eternity in heaven. It's just hard to imagine, but that doesn't mean it's not true. We can apprehend it without completely comprehending it. Just like you can go out to the ocean and apprehend there's an ocean in front of you, even if you can't completely comprehend everything going on in that ocean. So I think that since God is just, he's going to be just in the afterlife. He's only, he's only got two options. If God exists, and he does, there's only two options. You're either going to be with God in the afterlife or you're not. That's it. Those are the two logical options. With God is heaven, separated from God is hell. And the degrees of punishment are fair according to God. But Catholics believe that there is something in between 
purgatory Hell, yeah. or limbo do, do, depend do, do you think it's it's more likely that there is something like purgatory so that some people would eventually go to heaven well i don't see scriptural support for that i grew up in the roman catholic church i went to roman catholic uh, high school but i never saw that in the bible anywhere so i would take issue with that but god's going to be fair there's not going to be anybody that uh winds up in hell who goes i got a raw deal because he is just and there's not going to be anybody in heaven who isn't there by the blood of christ because all of us have fallen short of the standard okay lord where do i start um so i'm going to man that's going to be hard to explain that a oh, hard but so let me let me say this um everything he just said about health hell would be true meaning you will be tormented forever and ever that is if you believe that when you die you're not really dead that you go in an afterlife but according to the bible when you die bible says what the dead know nothing so if you don't know anything you cannot be in torment forever and ever secondly the bible all mentions certain words that look outrageous it's just a figure of speech for example bible says that and their torment arises forever and ever and we take it as literally for eternity whereas we are in a traffic and we'll be like man this traffic is taking forever but we know it's not true because we are here right now at home so we cannot be in a forever traffic so we know that that term forever doesn't always mean forever now in the first video that I made right there I mentioned about Sodom and Gomorrah and the fire actually you know what I need to bring that up uh, thank you Lord for reminding me of that part um, I mentioned about Sodom and Gomorrah and the hell fire that they have now now let me show you what I'm talking about but before I do that I want to premise to say this whenever you die you don't know anything right like I mentioned earlier you don't know anything so what happens when God comes to judge the world well let's look at that part right now remember in Malachi chapter 4 we talked about that last time in the video that is up there Malachi chapter 4 Bible says that the day will come when what the day will in which they up the day which is coming shall burn them up. Burn who up? All the proud, all the wickedly will be stumbled and they will be consumed. And I, I want you guys to read the whole chapter actually. Then, what do we have next? Well, okay, let me put it that way for you guys. Next, we. Okay. Let me see if I can do that bigger. Good okay next we have what in verse number three they shall be ashes under the sword of their feet which means if they become ash so they stop burning right now i mentioned about um malak um solomon gomorrah right that's the book of jude that's before revelation Jude is speaking only one chapter now and this is what I'm going to read that part for you guys from verse number 5 but I want to remind you through you once knew this though you though you once knew this that the Lord having saved the people out of, out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe remember I talked about Israelite, Israelites when they did not believe that God could get them into Canaan, then they were, then they died in the, in, the, in the wilderness. 
right here. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, that's Satan and his angels, when they were in heaven, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. What great day? Back to Malachi. What was the great day in Malachi? The great day of God when God's going to judge them. That's the great day. The great day of judgment. Okay? Now, what else? Verse number 6, right? And the, as the great day, verse number 6, right here. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality, LGBTQIA+, whatever, and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Wait a minute. So, Sodom and Gomorrah, they were suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Are they still burning? No. They are not burning anymore, guys. They are no longer burning. So when Bible says that and their torment arise forever and ever, it doesn't literally mean forever. It means up to the point where they are consumed. But the result of that consumption is forever. Now, we're not done yet. Let's now go to what Jesus says about in the last days. In the last days, Matthew chapter 24, we have a great tribulation, okay? And then we have the coming of the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the Son of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angel with the great sound of the trumpet and will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. At the same time, guys, that the angels are coming to pick up the elects, the wicked die. Why? Because when Jesus comes, he is coming with fire. And fire burns but I'm not gonna go too deep in that part because this is not about that area if you guys wanna know I'm gonna make a video that later on but let's keep on moving that was in Matthew chapter 24 1st Thessalonians, first Thessalonians chapter 4 this is 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verse number 15 through 18. Actually, no, first from number 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. So, those who have died, like right now, let's say your grandparents are already dead, your great grandparents, let's say you have a brother, sister, aunt, father, cousin, daughter who died. He said, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Now, when people say that when you die you go to an uh, afterlife, that's a bunch of lies. Because when you die, you are asleep. When you are sleeping, you don't know anything. And that's exactly what the Bible teaches. When you go to sleep, when you die, the Bible says the dead know nothing. John chapter 11, death of Lazarus. Man, that would have been the greatest story. When Jesus told Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. If he were actually in heaven, like people who are like maybe actually say, he would have said, Jesus, I was in heaven and enjoying my life. Why would you get me to come back to this wicked place? Or if you had been in hell, he would have said, Oh, thank you, Jesus. I was in hell burning forever and ever. 
you, 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 you will save me out of hell. No. When you die, the Bible says, you go to the tomb and you go to sleep. When you sleep, you don't know anything. The Bible says, the dead know nothing. When you die, the body goes back to the ground and the breath of life goes back to God who gave it. Let's keep on moving. Verse number, yeah. Let's you saw as others who have no hope. For if you will be believe that Jesus died and was again, for if we believe that Jesus died and was again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that he who are alive and remain until the, until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So if you were dead, how could you have been in heaven already or in hell being tormented? That makes no sense. Then we who are alive and remain shall be cut up together with them in the country of the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Let's go on. Now, we got up out of way that when you die, you don't go to any other place, you just go to sleep. And then, when Christ comes again, he raises you up. But, certain things will happen before Jesus comes again. Okay? I'm going to walk through those certain things briefly. Chapter 6 of Revelation, we have the first seal. There are seven seals in the Bible. First seal, the conqueror. I want you to assume the whole chapter, okay? Second seal, conflict on earth. Third seal, scarcity on earth. Fourth seal, widespread death on earth. Fifth seal, the cry of the, mar of the martyrs. Sixth seal, six seals, the cosmic disturbance. And I think there's the set, yeah, and then the seven one. Now, in number six, let's go from verse number 12 down. Bible says this, I look when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as cyclops of air, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, and yada yada. But in you know, verse number verse okay, verse number fifteen, Bible says that, and the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, mighty men of mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves. I mean, those are the people that were not in, that were not sealed by God, as you're gonna see in chapter seven. So those are the wicked people right now. Okay, these that we are looking at. That we are reading right now, these are the wicked people. And it says, And they hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and uh, from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? The great day of his wrath has come. Funny, we just read in Malachi chapter 4, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. What is that day? Is it not making sense? The day when God comes to judge the world, that's the day of the Lord. When he's coming with in fire. Now, what happens after that happens? Um, we have the people or the wicked die, and then the saints go with God in heaven. Okay, chapter 19. Okay, so this is this is still before hell. This is the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is not hell fire yet. 
This is before here. Let's see here. In chapter 19, Jesus comes down and when he comes again, he comes as kings and kings, king of kings and lord of lords. Okay? And we're going to see something. So, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I want to read certain things for you guys. Verse number 17 through 21. Then I saw an angel standing on the sun. Actually, not that one. I must, I'm going to read from verse number 19. And I saw the beast, the king of the earth. Now, if you don't understand everything, don't worry. Maybe in the future we're going to talk about that, but just for the sake of today. So basically what it says is that all the wicked people are captured, verse 20, all the beasts they're all, uh, and the wicked people are captured and they were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Verse, yeah, they were cast in the lake of fire and brimstone and the rest of the people were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of Jesus Christ and the birds were filled with their flesh. See, I think in Luke, Jesus says, and when the Son of King, man comes, two shall be on the housetop. One will be taken and the other one left. Two working on the field, one taken, one left. And one, is, one, of, one of the disciples says, but where are they left? Where are they left, God, Lord? Or where, where are two, Lord? Jesus says, wherever you see the carcasses, then you will see the eagles eating their flesh. Paraphrasing. Now, verse number, chapter 20. Boom. When Christ comes the second time, the wicked die, the saints go with him to heaven for a thousand years, and Satan is bound to earth. He cannot go anywhere. He has nowhere to go. Everyone is dead. Now, the saints go with Christ for a thousand years to look at the records of those that are saved and lost and we're going to see, we're going to judge God to see if he is right. Yes. That's from verse 4 to verse number 6. Verse number 7 through 9, this is where the New Jerusalem is coming down now. Bible says, now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is at the center of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of his of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. But funny, when Jesus comes again, the Bible says there will be no more night. So how could they be tormented day and night when there's no more day and night? It's just day because Jesus will become our son. There's no more night. So, now, this is the result. Before that happens, out. Before that happens, look at this. Then I saw a great white, white throne, and who sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the, and the heaven fled away, and there was no found, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. This, you see right here? That will tell you the end. And now it's telling you what, what actually happened before the end. So, the dead and small great, spawn and great, were sent before God and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. 
the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hate delivered up the dead who were in them. Meaning, whoever died and was not part of the first resurrection, they stayed in the tomb. Either you, dead, you were dead in the ocean or on earth, all the dead now were alive to be judged according to what they had done. Then death and hate were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second, what? Death. Which means, guys, man. Which means, the idea that you're going to be tormented forever and ever, it is not biblical whatsoever. Bible teaches that the dead, the dead know nothing. If you die, you're going to be dead. You're not going to know anything. I just hope that this message reached as many people as possible. Because I could probably expound more, but it's already like a long time already. But guys, so yes, if you, if you die, you're not going to be burning. Let me tell you. You won't be tormenting, you won't be tormented forever and ever, okay? You're going to be tormented for a little while, and then you're going to become ashes, which means you're going to, be, you're going to stop burning, and you're going to die. And once you're dead, you're forever dead. There is, you won't, there is, the dead know nothing. So if you're dead, you're dead. And you'll be no longer existent. At all. But I hope that makes sense. Um, if you guys have questions, you can put it in the comment section down below. Let me know. And don't forget again to subscribe, like the video as well. Until then, I'll see you again.